It should be pretty cool. Let me read you the lineup. Carl just said that there's a uh, festival in Vegas that he wants to go to. Three, two, one. Welcome to the podcast. It's called A Big Beautiful Block Party. There's no overlapping sets. Mm. Me likey. Yeah. That's uh, always a fucking bummer when you can't catch a band because there's two bands that you really want to see. I don't know who all these people are, but I'm just going to read the whole lineup. It's a pretty short list. Justice, Peggy Goo, LCD Sound System, Jamie XX, Jungle, James Blake, Thundercat, Toro y Moi, Bad Bad Not Good, Neil Francis, uh, LP, Giabi, Empress of John Talbot, and Fifi. But... Toro y Moi? I thought it was Tori Moi. I don't think so. Oh. I mean, that's how you pronounce M-O-I in French, and w- that's what I assumed it was. I'm probably wrong. Yeah, <laughs> I'm Maybe. I don't know. I'm sure that more people probably say Moi than Moi, and yeah. I could be incorrect, so fuck it. But Justice Sick, LCD Sound System, James Blake, Thundercat, Toro y Moi, Bad Bad Not Good. It's crazy. Did you hear the Bad Bad Not Good Turnstile record? No, but I did hear bits and pieces of Bad Bad's new album, and they're like changing their sound completely. Like, what's it now? They're doing like Latin dance, like Mm. not like not like Latin Latin, but like no, yeah, not like that, but like I don't know. It's hard to describe, but. Their new album is going to be sick. That's dope. Bad Bad was such a big part of like my musical upbringing. I loved one, two, and three. Four kind of fell off for me, and then everything after that, I just never really got back into them. But I mean, like when we were in high school, uh, Carl and I were in a band with our buddy Jake, and we just we wanted to be Bad Bad Not Good so bad. That it was, was like, fun. Yeah, just hip hop. Jazz covers. It was very fun. Um, so this past weekend, I have some big news for you guys. Some big, big news. Um, I went and saw Dead and Company at the Sphere in Las Vegas, and uh, I've got some. I've got some opinions that I'm gonna share, and I'm very excited to share them. So. Let me start by saying the sphere itself is amazing. Um, it's obviously a very new venue. I think uh, I, I looked it up. It, it opened in September, in the fall of 2023. So it just opened. It's a brand new venue. And when you go inside, maybe it was just the concert that I was at. But to me... Right off the bat, I was like, this is a very well-designed fucking venue. It's like, you know, I think it's like a 200,000 cap stadium, theater, whatever you want to call it. And just, it was designed with thought and purpose. Fuck yeah. Like, the way you get to your sections, there's a lot of different escalators and different entrances. Like, there's not one main entrance. And I know that's how a lot of arenas and stuff work. But it's just... It was very refreshing to go in. And the lines were, like, moving quick. Yeah. You know, there's bathrooms everywhere. So the bathroom lines aren't that bad. There's bars everywhere. So the in-between bullshit during a concert... The bullshit is kept to a minimum. Yeah, you know what venue doesn't do that well? The Palladium. Oh. It's crazy. So you wait in line for the show for doors to open, which is normal, right? But then you get in, and when I went to see Idols, they weren't ready to let everybody into the actual room. So then another just like insanely crowded, pretty much free-for-all line. There's three doors, a left, right, and center door to go into like the main mm-hmm. area. Just like free for all crowds of people, not a line, just like just waiting mass. for them to be like, okay, you can go in. Yeah. And then like, don't run, stop running, don't, don't run. And people are running to get to the front. It's like 
Jesus Christ. Yeah. And it's just like shoulder to shoulder in the lobby of the theater waiting for the show to go, like to open up. I don't want to say I'm Weird. done with GA tickets for myself. I'm not going to say that. But I will say it's really nice to have a seat and be like, okay, this is my view. This is solid. And then go to the bathroom halfway through the show mm. and come back and just not have to worry. That's fair. Like, of course, I appreciate, you know, getting to the front and staking your claim and stuff like that. But it's it was just nice to I'm just, sit I'm, and I'm just done it. not being able to properly hear shows. Yeah. I'm like, like with Idols, I was like, okay, I have to be close-ish to the front and be in the pits and all that. And like when they jump into the crowd, I want to be close to the where they're doing that and all that shit. But like, I want to see them again at some point whenever they tour again. Hopefully they do festivals before they like go away to do another album. But uh, yeah, no, I'd love to see them from further back where like the mix is right and all that shit. Cause like, you know, there's I want to be a balcony dweller, bro. Yeah, I'm a big balcony guy these days. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, like when I saw King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Um, crazy show to do that at for your first time seeing them too. Like, yeah. <laughs> I I did because li- I saw them multiple times and I did like being in the pit. But we were right at the front of the balcony, like seated section. Yeah. So you were like right it near the pit. You could really see it. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bal- balcony can be where it's at. Um, so where I was in the sphere, if anyone's been or is going to go. Or if you haven't been, I'll explain it. I was in the 100 section. I was in like 110 or 109. And the sphere is obviously this. the LED screen goes all the way up on the inside. The whole thing. It's supposed to be an immersive experience. And people don't love the 100 section, especially when you're further back, because there's a mezzanine above you. So you can't look up Uh. and see it. Now, we are in row 24. So you could see... Plenty fucking high. You just couldn't see straight up. Um, I think the best seat in the house would have been the front row of the 100 section because it's in front of the mezzanine. You have a seat. GA is right there. You can see the stage and the people on the stage like with your own eyes. You don't need to watch the screen. And you could still see up. I think that would be the best section. What about the front row of the mezzanine? Me? I don't know if I would want to be up top. Because I like I like to be able to see the people. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah. in the top row, you could probably still see them. But, like, I don't know, dude. The visuals were fucking trippy. I mean, it was dead and company. It was the right. Grateful Dead. So yeah. it's obviously going to be trippy. But even not even, like, a trippiness. Like, in the beginning, uh, it looks like you're looking at a street, and then it looks like you take off from the street. And my brain hadn't adjusted to the idea that there was a screen behind them, really. And, like, as it was going up and, like, spinning, I was getting, like, dizzy. I had to, like, grab my chair. Like, it was intense. And I heard some people, some friends of ours were up top, and they said they were getting, like, vertigo, and a couple of them, like, got really nauseous. Ooh. Because it gets so, like, whoa. It's because you're high up, you see everything. And I feel like being on the edge would trip me out even more. Um, but sound wise, amazing, really? fucking incredible. That's sick. Yeah. So the sphere, like historically a sphere is a bad, um, design for acoustics, acoustics because there's no hard edges. So it would be very reverberant. It would be, you know, whatever for a normal sound system. I just looked it up. The sphere has, let me tell you exactly how many. It has uh, 167,000 speakers. Hmm. So their whole thing is that they're very directional speakers as opposed to reverberating out just like and getting the sound out. It's very directional and they have like it all pointed right at 
individual seats. So each seats. person gets two speakers for their own stereo image, and yeah. they're just are pointing speakers yes. at every seat in the house. And <laughs> dude, let me tell you, That's it was sick. fucking perfect. Like a lot of the times, you go to a show and it's either a little too loud or a little too quiet. It was the perfect volume. Well, it fucking better be. It's the sphere. Like they're they, Vegas was like, we're gonna build the best. It is the best concert venue fucking ever. Yeah. Like, it's the best. Well, so many... There hasn't been a new concert venue at that echelon in, like, 50 years. And you know what's extra special about it is that the sphere was designed for shows. A lot of these other stadiums, they're shared with, like, basketball teams and hockey teams and stuff like that. Yeah. And then they change it so to make it a concert venue, the sphere is... A concert venue. Yeah. But apparently UFC is happening there. Whoa. That's what I heard. I don't know if that's true. That's sick. That's crazy town. <laughs> that's sick. That's crazy Dude, town. What are they going to put on the screen? The fight? People are going to be like, whoa. <laughs> it's, yeah. <laughs> um, sound was amazing. And the way you, you walk into the sphere and there's the outside area with like the bathrooms and the bars and you walk through the tunnel like each individual tunnel to get to each section, right? And as you walk through the tunnel, it's they have a sound deadening shit on the sides to the point where when you stand in the center of the tunnel, the concert's going on in front of you, and then there's a roar of the crowd at the bar behind you, and you can't really hear it. It's crazy. Whoa. Like the tunnel, even with both sides being open, is almost completely dead. Well, it's really trippy. And then you walk in, and you, you like, it feels like you taking you're taking off earmuffs. Whoa. <coughs> so we're sitting down. Now let me let me talk about the dead real quick. I'll give you my backstory on the dead, my opinions on the dead, blah blah blah. I've never really been into the dead. I've heard some songs. I'm like, all right. That's cool, but it was never my main cup of tea. I was I was never really captured by the dead. And a lot of my friends who know what I like musically would always tell me, yeah, yeah, I get it, but you need to see them live and your opinion would change. You need to see them live, your opinion would change. I saw them live. Holy fucking shit. One of the best shows I've ever fucking seen. Like, would you think you'd say that if it wasn't at the sphere? Would I say that? Um, maybe not. Maybe not. Okay. But so continue. Probably yes. Okay, that's fine. I'm not going to debate that. I'm just curious. So, like, visually, holy shit! Yeah. Fuck, man. Yeah. Like, I didn't. I didn't take a lot of drugs or anything like that. You know, but even. Even being relatively sober, it's a trippy fucking visual experience. Yeah. Um, so this is where I'm going to tread lightly because I don't want to offend too many people. I Let me paint the picture. We're, we're, we're going to Vegas and we, uh, we put on the dead in the car and I was like, you know what? Turn it off. I don't want to listen to it. I'm going in pretty cold. Like, I know, I barely know any songs. Um, I don't really want to listen to them. Let me just go in cold. I see them perform, and uh, it's the original, uh, one of the original guitar players, the original keyboard player, and the original drummer. Um, and the original drummer isn't on the drum set. He's on, like, a big drum set of, like, bongos and... A lot of aux percussion shit. Keyboard player is playing the keyboard. And Bob Weir, the other guitar player, he's playing guitar and singing. And then, oh man, I should fucking know their names. John Mayer is the other guitar player. Um, let me look up the, yeah, the bass player real quick. Bass. Bass player. Hotel. Burbridge? How do you say his name? Burbridge? Bur how do you say that? Yeah. Hotel Burbridge. Holy shit. Underrated for a dead and company. Like, a lot of people will talk about John Mayer's guitar playing, and John Mayer's obviously an amazing guitar player. 
Um, but the bass player, holy shit, he was he adds so much to that show that I don't think enough people appreciate. I didn't grow up listening to the dead. I just, I think I like dead and company better. And I know that's, it's a hot take for some people and it's not that hot of a take for other people. I understand that Jerry Garcia really laid down that foundation, but the way I described it is that the grateful dead created the canvas for dead and company to thrive. The new bass player, John Mayer, the new guitar player, and then the new drummer. I take can't, I can't find the drummer's name. They take that show to a new level. They're like they're John Mayer's a better guitar player than Jerry Garcia. I, I, it's like a hot take for some. Do you hear that? You uh, fucking dumb hippies. So it was amazing. Like the the jam session sections were so fucking electric like i don't get super i'm not i i like have a disdain for the whole like hippie like spiritual level of the dead like i don't know man like it's crazy but there was a moment (laughs) right at the end of the first set because there's a uh intermission and they were playing casey jones which i didn't know that song before the show and there was this solo section and like, not that I know what it's like, but you know, you know, when, um, people describe taking Molly yeah, and there's like the, uh, wave of like heat in your body Mm -hmm. and you're like, woo. And when it hits, Mm -hmm. I swear to God that happened. You peaked. I peaked, bro. (laughs) (laughs) Like it was like, Holy dude, it, it really transported me, man. It was yeah. fucking wild. But my overarching opinion is that I, I really do have a new appreciation for the dead. I think Dead & Company puts on one of the best shows you could ever go see. I couldn't suggest going to see them more. But Deadheads still, still, still kind of piss they me still off. They still suck. They, like, and here's why. It could have been the people that I was around. I'll give you that, Deadheads, if you're out there. But I'm talking to this dude. He's like 40 years old. He's like, yeah, man, I don't know. It's just you'll never see me act like this. It's just like, you know, something about this music just takes over me. And he's like doing like the classic like Grateful Dead dances where you're like twirling your hands and spinning around. I'm like, oh, you can't. You don't know what took over you. You don't know what's happening to you. You're doing like the most cliche fucking thing on the planet. And you don't know what it is. Something about it. It just. And I get when the, there was like there's like like older folks there and they're like in their sixties and seventies. Yeah. And you know, like Grandma Sue, she puts on her old fucking tie dye bandana and she goes out there. I get that. Fuck yeah. Go Grandma Sue. But if you're twenty five Yeah, what uh, and you you paid six hundred dollars for your ticket and you bought your hundred and fifty dollar merch and you're wearing it, it just they just feel like posers is the best way I can describe it. So you got all these people who I felt like were kind of poses. And I'm saying that as not even someone who, like, really loves the dead. Like, I'm just saying that from what I saw, a lot of chit-chat. A lot of chit-chat, a lot of dancing. I felt like there wasn't enough appreciation for what was happening on stage. Yeah, not a lot of listening and watching. Like, the dude who's like, yeah, I don't know, man. It just, like, takes over me. During the solo, he's, like, turning around and talking to his buddy. I'm like, no, no. Hey, stop twirl in your hands and listen to these motherfuckers on stage just fucking annihilating my brain. Yeah. It was it was incredible. Um so I still think Deadheads are kind of fucking annoying. Uh but it is one of the best shows that you could ever see. Um back to your point about whether or not I would say that um, at the sphere, if it was not at the sphere, I don't know. I can't say because it wasn't that, but it definitely added to it. Well, Maybe see, not the only the options you'd ever have would be to see them at a stadium, which would objectively be a lot worse. And there's no chance that you would enjoy seeing them at like SoFi Stadium 
nearly as much as I did the Sphere. Yeah, for sure. there's no shot or the Kia Forum or some shit like that because it's like it's not going to sound as good as good. It's going to be super reverberant, just like yep. every other stadium show is. It's just you know, and if you probably would leave not. I'm not going to say probably, but there's a much higher chance that you would not that you would leave not thinking that it was one of the best shows you had ever seen because the quality of the show just would not be anywhere as close to the same. Yeah. Even if you take away the Sphere's amazing visuals. The trippy stuff, the sound. It's still a venue that was built state-of-the-art in 2022 for concerts. And there's so. haptic seating, so like those seats shake. And there's a section of the dead shows, uh, drum and space. And the drummer... And a couple of they get the you know they play the drums and then the uh, and then the drummer has this like crazy drone synth section and during that the visuals are obviously really trippy but the uh, seats shake during that part I, maybe they were shaking during the rest of the show but I was standing so I couldn't I couldn't tell um, yeah very very cool. Nice. And also, the one thing I'll say is, like, if you're like, oh, yeah, but I don't really like The Dead, there's something for everyone in that show, no matter what kind of music you like, barring, like, metal and punk. But if you have an appreciation for it, like, there was, like, in drum, dr in the drum section, it was, like, EDM shit. That's like, cool. And then they were, like, drumming over top of it. Whoa. It was, it was cool. Weird. Yeah. Interesting. Um. Yeah, so it was very... Very sick. Very sick indeed. Other than that, Vegas was fun. What a place. What a place Vegas is. Um, yeah. The dudes who were sitting next to us, they were like, the they were like, yeah, dude, this is the ninth time I've seen them here at the Sphere. Oh, my God. And I was like, okay. That's right. what residencies are for, man. Yeah. Those guys, if you haven't seen them, you know, and you want to, you should probably go because those guys are fucking old. They're going to die. They are fucking old as shit. Bob Weir's, I think, 79 or 80. At one point, I thought the drummer was going to keel over. Like, you know. They're cashing out for so, retirement. I mean, they said their last tour. They're like, oh, this is our last tour. And then they announced this Sphere residency. I, I kind of believe them. If you think about as an artist... Let's say let's bar like the money. They, I feel like they'll probably announce an MSG residency. That's fair, you know. That's fair, yeah. But as an artist, if you do your whole career and you've toured and done so many shows, and you're like, okay, here's a state of the art venue that we can put on a show that was never possible before. Let's just do this for a whole summer, and that will be our farewell. Let's give a central location where you tell everyone in the world, come here. This is the best show ever. This is the best you'll ever see us. They didn't say that, but it was in the subtext, you know? Yeah. I could see them doing a Madison Square Garden residency. Yeah. It, it won't just be makes as, sense. It won't be as cool as a sphere, but. Yeah, but like, I don't know. East, East coast, coast, West Coast. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, man. Yeah, and here's my Grateful Dead shirt. No, I didn't buy it at the concert. It was on eBay. It's vintage. It's vintage. How vintage? I don't know how vintage. I didn't buy it. Older than six years? I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, that's it. All right. <laughs> you got any concert? To I'm excited for that Karungman show with UMO. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to that. But You're not? No. Oh. Well, I'm excited for that. I'm going to go I see mean, I do wish that I was seeing UMO, but I I was a little bit tight on cash when we all bought tickets for that, so I, I didn't go. I sent you the link. And then I got but a new job, and I've been you might still be buying tickets left and right recently. You might still be able to get tickets going to, to the, the show. Going to the Phillies in August, going to LCD Sound System in November, and I might go to that festival in, in Vegas, Vegas, if other people decide they also want to go. Jack's like, I'm going to buy my fucking tickets now. Do you want to go see Clown Core at the Lodge Room? Yeah, I do. I do really bad. <laughs> tickets are like 45 bucks, but that's... 
Yeah. There's like, there's like four sick. shows or like five shows in their whole tour, and two of them are at the Lodge Room in Los Angeles. Yeah, no, they're fucking crazy. So I could be down to go see Clown Core. Um, huh. So, I mean, I feel like this has been a pretty good episode, and I don't want to taint it with a story about me bitching about something, but I ran into the most ridiculous lady in the world the other day at the most exactly where you think it would have happened at that complex with like the equinox and the air one and the civil and everything. Oh God. Yeah. This lady and her husband are just, they're sitting, they're drinking their coffee from fucking air one. And they have this like two year old son and he's just like running around, like not doing anything wrong. Just like little kid shit. He's like fucking, waddling around he sees like a rock on the ground he bends over and pokes it and then he keeps running around he's fucking being a little kid and he like ran over to the parents and like bonked his head on her chair and cut his eye and they fucking lose it dude she's like i mean obviously because he starts crying she's like coddling him and cuddling with him and like trying to look at his eye and where wherever it like cut him like on his cheek or something like that by his eye. The the cut is like microscopic and also not bleeding. Justine and I were sitting about this close to them. The dad comes over and he's like, Oh my god, is he okay? Is he okay? And then she's like, yeah, go get napkins or something to like clean it <laughs> get off. Napkins. With. Yeah. So they he runs to go get a bunch of fucking napkins, comes back, blah, blah, blah. They figure it out. Justine and I are there for like another half hour. Incrementally, the kid is fine. He stops crying before the dad even gets back with the fucking napkins. She, over the next half hour, I see her like checking out the chair and she's like looking at it and like feeling around it and like trying. I'm like, what the fuck is this bitch doing? Why is she freaking out about this fucking chair? So, the coffee hits me, and I leave to go take a poop. <laughs> I go into the bathroom, and there's a fucking homeless guy living in the goddamn stall. <laughs> I walk out, and the security guy's already on it. I can see him, like, on the phone. I assume that that is what he's trying to deal with. I come out, and she's there. She goes, excuse me, uh, m- my son... Uh, cut his got uh, hit his face and cut his uh cut his face on a chair over here and she like brings him over and starts inspecting the chair and I didn't hear this but Justine said that she's like I don't know what we're gonna have to do about this but like I need to be compensated blah 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 all this bullshit for the chair yeah for the his ki- her kid getting hurt on the chair yeah and I was like it's a two year old he ran into something that's what they do also like. Meanwhile, David, while they're fucking pissing a fit, pitching a fit about the fucking chair, and like, I don't know if you want to do something about this chair. I don't know what's sharp about it, but it did something. It just cut his face. I don't know how it happened, but like, I don't know. You might want to do something about the chair. They fill out a whole report with her email and all this stuff so that they can follow up and all this shit. Meanwhile, the kid is 40 feet away, climbing on gardens and shit that you're not supposed to walk on. Like, easily could, like, fall and actually hurt himself. Like, he's climbing up, like, a three and a half, four foot ledge. And I'm like, these people are the dumbest fucking people I've ever seen in my life. That cop definitely just tore up that fucking form. Dude, and then... What the fuck are you going to do? And we're then gonna we, uh, you know, we sat there for, like, a little bit. I got I got some ice cream because you know me and gotta have ice cream. Gotta have ice cream. And then as we're leaving, we see the cop finally getting the homeless guy out of the bathroom, and he's like, you know, walking him out and whatever. Uh, and it's just like, holy shit, dude! Like, what saying the fuck we need is to be going com- on. This guy has the worst. Is having literally the worst day at work you could ask for. He's working outside. He has to wear like full security garb, so he's. It was Probably also like hot, 110. Yeah, hot as shit. Just. Oh, and then after they like finished all the bullshit with the chair, they left all their fucking garbage on the table 
Those are good people. Those are those are good people. <laughs> Fucking Jesus. Yeah, that's got to be a rough job being a security guard at that area. At an Erwan Equinox. Fucking yeah, yeah. It's dude. just you guys know Soto Sopa in fucking like uh, South Park. That this area is Soto Sopa. It's yeah. just you know. Um, all right. Anyway, but it was just well, hilarious. Hey, you know, I can't. I can't help, but. Like, it's also, it's just so crazy because it's like, I deal with a lot of irrational young people on a day-to-day basis, but these people are like adults with money and yeah, they're raising a child and they're... Isn't it, isn't it the real, uh, isn't becoming a true adult realizing that every other adult is like, you know, as a kid, you just think every and adults are smart and then you grow up and you're like, oh no, everyone's a fucking moron. I just don't know what has to happen throughout your life to like make a stink like that, that woman did. You know what I mean? I, I don't think about that all the fucking time. Fucking crazy! Like what? What? How were you raised? How did yeah. your parents act that made you think that like this guy one gives a flying fuck about yeah. your kid, even if he was legitimately hurt, which he wasn't? This guy has nothing to do with furnishing this fucking thing. He is a security guard. Like he's not here to file down sharp edges of chairs that aren't actually sharp you know it's worked in the past though that that wasn't their first time especially when she was like i need compensation that's how they got their fucking money and are going to erewhon and equinox it's fucking crazy like what is she sitting at home waiting for this email from like uh, it's crazy anyway yeah i don't know it's easy to pass judgment on parents carl when we're we both have no children but I wish that things like that could take up my mental bandwidth. Jesus Christ! Imagine having that little to think yeah, and care think about. They, but do you think they even? Do you think they actually gave a shit? Like I said, her focus was compensation. I don't know. They were losing it a little bit when the kid was crying. <laughs> they knew that they were going to check the security cameras. You know, maybe they're just master. I mean, but yeah, that's that. You know, that helps with the point that that like when they were actually filling all this out, the kid was fucking off doing whatever the fuck he wanted, like not being looked after in the slightest. Like, yeah, she saw the money bags and forgot she even had a son. You know, it's a thing as people who are like career lawsuit people. Yeah, yeah. You like go to a job. I'm a career OSHA violation. Yeah, you go to a job. And you work there for four months or for uh, four weeks. You figure out what you can sue about. You sue and then you move on. Yeah. It's crazy. Either, that definitely is like can't be public information like people you've sued in the past, right? Like in your... No, it's all public records. 100%. That's got to be a short-lived career. you can career. look up any lawsuit. It's all... It's got to be a short... No way after like your third or fourth lawsuit anyone's going to hire you. I don't know if there's like a tool that exists that you can like put in somebody's name and just see any lawsuit that they've been a part of. I doubt that that exists, but there are public records, mm. you know, but I, I don't know how you search for them and all that, but... Interesting. Anywho. All right. Hey. Take it easy, ladies and gentlemen. Happy summer. If your kid if, hits, a ta- hits a table or a chair and they're not hurt... Don't call the cops. I mean, even if they are hurt, I'm sure they'll be okay. Just make sure they have their tetanus vaccine. Would that? Would it? Would you have changed your mind about the opinion if the kid just uh, demolished his eye? If he was like actually bleeding and all fucked up, then I would understand. But it still wouldn't be the chair's fault. It would be the kid running too hard into any object. Yeah, you know. Could happen at their house. And also, what are you going to do? Bubble wrap the whole world? Yeah, what the fuck? That sounds kids like Kids really are supposed to fucking get hurt. They're kids. It's what fucking happens. Like, you live, yeah. and you live and you learn. Holy shit. I didn't just come up with that. It's just yeah. what it is, you know? Yeah. But whatever. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks for listening. Subscribe. Go see Dead & Company. And uh, don't be annoying about it. Yeah. Actually listen. Don't be a cunt. Yeah. <laughs>